Hey guys, I'm Liza with Lopez, registered holistic nutritionist and master trainer. And today I want to talk to you about some natural, healthy supplements for building those muscles. Those muscles. <laughs> there are a lot of supplements out there, and especially if you are new to lifting, you may not know kind of the direction to go. Someone might be saying, hey, try this or try this. I know when I started my career, there were some things I was told to take that I did not, I didn't take them. But if I hadn't done a little research, I could have been like fully on steroids and people were just like, no, it's great. And I was, when I looked it up, I'm like, oh, but that's steroids. They're like, yeah, everybody takes it. And I mean like bikini girls, like a lot of females are taking stuff that is not so natural. So this would be kind of as far as I go when I'm in muscle building mode, okay? And I don't take any of these all the time, just FYI. But are you ready? Let's talk about some good and healthy muscle building stuff. Let's talk protein. This is probably the one that most people are taking out of everything here, okay? Some protein companies out there might add things in that are not listed on the label. If they want to be cheap and they want it to taste really, really yummy, there could potentially be cake mix in your protein powder. Another thing that might happen is they could spike the protein powder um, with something like tribulus. And the reason you'd be like, well, why would they want to add that in there? And I mean, when you think about it, especially if it's like a first run of a protein, if they add something in it that's gonna give you way more muscle and stuff like that, and you might tell all your friends, oh my God, I tried this protein and I immediately had all these like great gains or whatever, and then you, you know, continue to buy it and then they take it out because they don't want to get caught because occasionally these things are actually tested. But some of them do get caught doing it, so just kind of do your research before you buy protein. Don't just go to the shelf and just grab whatever has a pretty package. One thing I want you to think about is this is not a replacement for food. To me, protein powder is more of a backup, okay? so. You kind of decide what you're gonna eat in a day, you're deciding how much protein that you wanna have for your goals, and just like quick side note, um, what I do with a lot of my clients is if they are like super intense, going really ham in the gym, I might have them do somewhere around like the one gram of protein per pound, okay? Um, so if I'm 130 pounds, then 130 grams of protein, right? And if they're a little bit less active, like they're just kind of like gym goers, maybe 0.8, times their body weight, and if they're a little bit more sedentary, maybe 0.6, okay, so you can kind of play with that. I find females in general don't get enough protein in. If you're really struggling and you can't get it in in food, and you've tried, then this is an alternative. Now with whey, it is a good source, but you also wanna make sure if you're always doing it on a regular basis, you might start to get sensitive to it. You might start to get bloating or gas. That usually means either try a better quality one. Um, this one is actually fermented, which, which will help with digestion, but you can also try rotating to different types of protein. So I've got like a bone broth protein here, I've got a collagen one at home, I've got the fermented whey one, we've got a vegan one with rice and pea. So what I like to do is I try not to have, like I don't aim to have it in my diet, but when I do, I'll start maybe with whey. When this bottle finishes, I might switch over to a bone broth. And when it finishes, I might switch over to a vegan, even though I'm not vegan, just to keep everything you know, not getting bloaty and stuff like that. There's also meal replacements where there's lots of carbohydrates in it, so just make sure that if you're trying to get a protein powder, it is a protein powder. It means it's generally pretty low carb, pretty low sugar, and relatively somewhere usually in the range of like 20 to 30 grams of protein per serving. Try not to have it more than once a day if you can. You can do a lot of fun things with it. You can make it into ice cream. We've got a video. Look, we'll try to list it below for you. You can make it into lots of things. You can put it in your shake, you can add greens and stuff into it. So protein is a fun option. There you go. Let's move on to the next one. We're gonna talk about BCAAs, branched amino <laughs> We're gonna talk about BCAAs, which are branched chain amino acids. The three amino acids are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now, the most important one is leucine, and that is because it actually can help with protein synthesis, and protein synthesis is how we get bigger muscles. Woo -woo! But I probably have this more than any of these, and I know most people probably have protein more than any, but I think I have BCA more than any, because I like to do a lot of fasted sprints in the morning, I like to do weights in the morning, probably before I have any food. And one of the things that BCAA does is it helps to be muscle sparing. So when you're working out, and especially if you're someone that does do that fasted stuff in the morning, so you're burning uh, fat, but you also might be burning some fuel if you're, you know. This one here is just the fermented white powder, and it it smells, see the, 
Doesn't it does not smell great? It equally does not taste great. But if you're gonna take BCAAs, this would probably be my top choice. This one is uh, more of a mix, but it probably smells more yummy. Okay, it smells kind of like strawberry-ish. This is a mix. You need to be careful because a lot of them have like a lot of colors, artificial colors, artificial sweeteners, aspartame. So don't just take it because it's the only one you could find. Okay, do actually search out to find one that is like stevia sweetened. Um, you don't want sucralose. Okay, stevia is probably your, your best bet or go for the one that smells like yeah, Ugh. and then for my vegans out there, I found, now I don't know 100% because like I haven't had a chance, I'm sorry, to look up the, the exact science on vegans, on BCAAs versus EAAs. So for this one for vegans, from I think it was the two or three girls in my class all that tried it, they were just like, wow, I feel so great. Partly what that tells me is they're not getting enough protein. Okay, so this is just helping them get more of those essential amino acids. So for my vegans, maybe you can try this one versus this one. Okay, if you're not vegan, I would just say do this one because you're gonna get a lot of your essentials just from eating meat. So you wanna make sure when you do look that you do have more leucine than the other two, than valine and isoleucine, although you, you do want all three. And just kinda like a little side note on that, if you're going and buying protein powder and it says with branched chain amino acids or glutamine, you get all excited and you're just like, yay, two for one. No, that's, that's a way of spiking protein. So do buy them separately, yes? Bam, let's go to the next. Glutamine is what we're gonna talk about next. What I like about glutamine is that it kind of helps with that post-workout recovery, and it's a non-essential amino acid. You can find it in things like grass-fed beef, and you can find it in fish and stuff like that, but not necessarily the concentration that you'll want it in for that intense muscle recovery. Other reasons that I like to use glutamine also is it, it does help with you know your digestion and stuff like that. It's kind of like that healer. Our, our muscles are made of a lot of glutamine, and when we're working out, um, we can kind of diminish some of that glutamine, so taking it after the workout helps to replenish it and allows you to maintain and have those bigger muscles at the end of the day. Yes, yes. Spirulina is next on my list that I'm gonna show you. It's very green. Um, it smells very green, it tastes very green. You've been forewarned. Oh yeah, Woo! That's that kind of like seaweedy kind of smell and taste. Can you see it? Can you see it? So spirulina is not directly a muscle building supplement. It is not something you're gonna take and be like, Rah! but this is just me. Okay, I'm not saying don't take a multivitamin. I'm just saying I don't take a multivitamin. Instead of taking a multivitamin, I usually kind of go back and forth between something like a sea vegetable, either spirulina or chlorella, or I'll do like bee pollen or royal jelly, but just kind of as that like insurance policy on top of our healthy diet, I would do something like this because if I'm lacking something like my magnesium or my vitamin C or my calcium, my lifts aren't gonna be as good or my magnesium. So this is just kind of like that insurance policy to make sure everything is working nicely. I'm actually gonna read you some benefits because I'm not gonna remember them all and reading is good, so excuse me while I reach for my computer. <laughs> Barely enough contains about 10 times the calcium of cow's milk, several times more iron than red meat. Um, sea vegetables are easy digestible, chlorophyll rich, alkaline forming, they're packed with minerals. Sea vegetables are the richest source of natural occurring electrolytes known. Bam, right, right? I just wanted to make sure that you got that little information so you understand why this is included in this odd combination, but yes. Okay, so I will put a link below in the description box where you can look a little bit more into spirulina and just kind of sea vegetables in general, okay? And the reason I chose spirulina out of the sea vegetables is this one's a little higher in protein than chlorella and some of the others, but I would rotate it anyways. I wanna talk about creatine. <laughs> I just wanna say so. I wanna talk about creatine. This is it here, okay? It is a non-essential, or it's three non-essential amino acids of uh, methionine, arginine, and bleh. Hold on. <laughs> yes. 
Three non-essential amino acids, which means that our body can make it on our own. You can get creatine basically from like grass-fed beef, from fish. It's not a substance that's going to make you, like you take it and you instantly like get muscles. I think people think it's that. It's not a steroid, okay? Um, and I think even steroids, you probably still have to work out. I don't know that much about it. Um, but with creatine, the way it works is it actually just kind of it gives your muscle energy like a little bit more than you might have had. So for instance, let's say I'm at the gym and I'm doing squats, okay? And usually I would fail at eight reps, okay? If I'm taking creatine, maybe I can get to 12 to 14 reps instead, which means I can move up in weight a little bit earlier because it just kind of gives me a little bit more like that ATP. It just kind of lets it last a little bit longer. Other things that can insist in as well is for my ladies and for my guys too, we like to do sprints because sprints make the booty look good and the legs look good and it's good for fat burning and everything. It can actually help you with power. So it can help you with your sprints. It can help you with your jumps. Um, that's why a lot of athletes will take it as well. Some things to think about with creatine and you guys can do your own research out there because there's a lot of studies and the studies contradict just a little bit, just, just a little bit. So depending on what study you read, some will say to load first. Some will say you do not need to load and it's just trying to make you buy more. There's also studies out there that will say you should stop at three months and you know give your body a rest because it could be damaging to your kidneys if you take it for too long um, and some other people that will say no it's fine to take long term I'm just gonna stick with how I took it and how I took it was I did do a little bit of a load to get it into your system because one thing with creatine is it doesn't like you take it that day and have an amazing workout you need to get it into your system a little bit and whether you choose to load or you choose to just kind of take it over time and then it does start to work eventually it needs to be a little bit consistent it's not one of those supplements where you can say I'm gonna take it today and then maybe I'll take it next week and then expect it to work. No, you, you got to do a little bit of sequence. Most people can do well on like three to five grams a day when you're taking it. It just kind of depends on your body weight as to how much you're having generally. So you can kind of look a little bit more if you decide to take it. I would still personally recommend not to take it more than three months at a time and do a little bit of a cycle with it just in case. There's a ton of types out there. If you choose to go a different way, that is okay too. But that would be at the end of the day, this is kind of like the little kit. Okay, for my, um, great for my skinny girls trying to put on mass, and also for my thick girls, you know, you've heard about what the different ones do. You can decide which ones are best for you. I hope this helped. If you guys have tried any of them and you want to share your experience, please do so below in the comments. If you have questions, you can also post them down there. I like to be interactive and chit chat with you and see the conversations going on. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. We put out videos every single week on nutrition, fitness, health stuff, everything. Thank you so much, guys, and peace out. Bye. I can feel my tummy feels flatter. My digestion feels better. Um, and these are all things that this does. So are you ready? I'm going to show you my fire shot. Um, you see I have two machines here. This is just like a citrus juicer and a little like uh, mini blender. If you don't have either of